Come on, come on, come on, no, come on. Okay, well, did you you said you were gonna get your own hat? Yeah, well, I haven't had time. Well, Jim, come on, stop lying to yourself and start doing something. <laughs> <laughs> See, look at look at me. I'm learning. This is what you're talking about, right? I hope you're learning. I'm trying to. I'm trying to. So, question for today that I came to gym with is, um, how do I have confidence? What what? How do I do that? You know, we talked about doubts, which is great. I can't doubt. But Jim, when I go to the when uh, when I go to the gym, all those all those big juice monkeys around the bench press, it's, they're scary. What if I what if I can't? I'm, I'm scared to Why go. Why are they scary? They're just big, and I'm not. I'm not. I mean, I'm. I know I'm pretty. I'm pretty big myself, Folks, but I'm not just so that you know, big. This is in the jungle with Jungle Jim <laughs> Hunter, and we inspire, teach confidence. Mm-hmm. And empower you. Right. That's why I live here. your best life. And we're going to get Cole to live his best life and get over this stupid <laughs> hang up he has about bench pressing 225. <laughs> I just want to make sure. I'm taking my hat okay. off because oh. I'm serious. Now. Okay. All right. All right. Well, don't get mad at me. I just want to make sure I have everything I need. And I'm scared, Jim. I'm, I'm scared. What are you they're, scared of? You're going to look at me. There's nothing to be scared okay, of. Okay. Well, you're going to have to, you're going to have to show me today. Just I, because I, you look like a pretzel <laughs> and you're the skinniest guy hey. in the gym. Don't let them intimidate you. Okay. Uh, you go in there and blow them away. Right, right. But but I'm I'm What small. do you think I was when I was young? I just went in there and did what I had to do and I didn't care what anybody said. What do you think I should do? How should I be thinking about confidence differently? Why is it intimidating? What do you think? I I built a whole show around answering that question mm. this week because when our when our listeners write me and ask me questions like this, I know it's a serious question. I, I can tell you right now, the three number one things I get asked all the time is, how do I get more confidence? Mm. How do I get motivated? And and it, it's funny how people ask those same two questions. They're always the first two questions. Motivation and confidence. Motivation and confidence. Mm. And and they think that somehow there's a magic, there's a secret, there's there's a formula that you can that you can apply to it. Mm. The only thing I could think of, and I and I wanna I wanna make this very clear to you today when you're listening to the show and you're listening to what I'm saying, mm-hmm. I want you to understand that my dad had a statement. He had he had 128 statements, and I wrote them all down and I have them all numbered. Mm-hmm. And the reason why I have them all numbered is because sometimes he was too far away in the farmyard mm-hmm. or too far away where we were working. And he would say one of them, and we couldn't hear it, and we would go like this. So a statement. What do you mean, like a statement? Like a. Oh, you'll see in a second. Okay. And he would go like that. We would go like this. You'd hold your ears. You look like a monkey. Yeah. And and he would go. Oh. And you knew that twenty-seven was the oh, one. Oh, he like flashes hands with yes. like numbers. Okay. And and you would go, oh yeah, twenty-seven. And twenty-seven what? Twenty twenty-seven out of the hundred and twenty-eight. Was the one that he was saying. Oh, you memorized 128 of his sentences? Yeah. Wow. With my dad, you had to be able to tell him every one of them. (laughs) And if you couldn't, he made you repeat it until you could tell him. Right. Number 27 Mm -hmm. was this. You can have the skill and you can have the will. You can have the skill and you can have the will. Okay. But without the fill, it'll never fit the bill. Now, what's the fill? I don't know. You tell me. What is the fill? I don't know. I I used to look at him and say, (laughs) what does that mean, dad? Yeah. And he would say, without confidence, it doesn't matter how much skill you have. It doesn't matter how much will you have. If you don't have confidence, you're finished. Hmm. You're done. Now, I've told you in the two previous podcasts, if you're listening to these in order, mm-hmm. I've talked about doubt. And doubt is the first door in this side of your life. This is you. Right. The, the right? five things you have. We talk about them every time. The five things we always mm-hmm. have is you've got your life, mm-hmm. you've got time, you have choice. Yes. Then you can give and you have your community. This six, seven foot community yes. when you reach out what and you say, have. this is my life. This is me. Mm-hmm. We've all got that. Mm-hmm. But when it comes to choice, we have the freedom to choose whatever we want. We can accept, reject. We can support. We can not support. We can go to the gym or we can sleep in. We can do whatever we want. Exactly. And we have the freedom to do that. Mm -hmm. And I told you that the first word that I have in my training, in my background, was doubt. Right. But the second one is the word confidence. Hmm. Now, why? Because confidence is the window in doubt's door. Okay, 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 hold on. You're, so, you're going to have to break that I'm, down for me. No, I'm going to make it real easy for All you. All right, I'm going to need it. Think about it. Okay, if I'm trying. If you are looking 
through your eyes at life. Yes, like right, like I'm looking at you. Like I'm looking at you, right. you're looking at mm-hmm. me, and we're looking at each other, and mm-hmm. people there are watching <laughs> on their screens, and right. they're looking at me, and they're right. going, what do you mean? You don't look with your eyes. You don't look with your eyes. What do you, what do you look you with? You look through your eyes. Because hmm. every image you see goes and sends a message to your brain and immediately asks, based on experience, previous experience, how do I feel about that? Hmm. What? How do I feel about watching Jim in a blue sweater today? Right. How do I feel about why is he wearing a red shirt today? So, I mean, huh. all of those things have a bearing on what you're thinking and what you're feeling. And that's the fill that's in you. And if we don't fix the fill in you, you can have the skill and you can have the will, but it'll never fit the bill. Right. Look, okay. The most okay, talented wait. people. Hang on, hang on. The I want to understand this. No, I, I'm going to. Jim, exp- I'm not very quick. Okay. <laughs> I know Ask you your question. To, I don't even want to speak, but I don't understand. Ask your question. Okay, so what you're trying to say is I don't like I see through my contacts, right? Like so, something like that. Like absolutely. So when you say I see through my eyes, it's more like my brain does the seeing, and the eyes are like the way to are in the way of what I see, basically. Okay. Another way to do it is this: close your eyes. Uh huh. Can you see anything? Well, well, I see the color black. Exactly. And some weird shapes. So you can't around. see anything. And there's weird shapes that run around inside your eyes, <laughs> sure. right? Yeah. And and that's the way they work, right? But the minute you open them, yes. there's impressions. There's, there's images. You. There's there's me. There's whatever you're seeing. There's the and, jungle. And based on that, you are responding to it. Okay. And that's what's in you. That's what's in you. That's who you are. That's who you've become over the Years you've lived, you've developed hmm. into who you are and what you are and how you respond. Oh. All my listeners, all of the watchers are watching this and going, well, I know who I am. No, I bet you don't know who you are. Hmm. Because if I were to put you under pressure, what kind of a person would you actually be? If I were to say, you're going to be an Olympic athlete, let's get ready for the Olympics. Or we're going to do four podcasts right now and they all got to be uploaded tomorrow. Exactly. Or we're going to go to the gym and bench press 225. You'd immediately crack into a sweat and go, (laughs) he's coming with me? Uh Uh-oh. I do not want to go to the gym with him. It's not going to be fun. Because the fill in you, who you are, what you are, is already starting to calculate what kind of an experience is this going to be? What kind of an experience could it be? And the reason why the window in the door of doubt yeah, that's one, is what you're looking that. through is that you see through your eyes what you have inside you and you're already determining what it is and you also see yourself looking back through the window at yourself saying, I doubt if I can do this or Hmm. I can do this. So you're saying doubt is the door that is preventing you from getting to the other side. And then confidence is the window in the door. But you see yourself in the window. The window to your soul. The window to who you are at your core. Is confidence. Yes. So So what's the difference between, in this analogy, what's the difference between someone who has confidence and someone who doesn't? Because if I slam the door and the window breaks... Uh Where did your confidence go? Mm. If we crack the window, how do you get it back? How how do you how do you find confidence after it's been shattered, after it's been gone? Hmm. What happens if you attempt something and you fail at it and now your confidence is shattered and it's gone? There are certain parameters that they know and that we know and we study and I've worked with so many athletes that I've got to work with them and And get them to understand that we are, as human beings, so attuned to performance accomplishment. In other words, this is what I've done. This thing. This thing. I I went and wrote my math exam and I got 98%. And I'm a 98%er. I I am. This is who I am. And you're going, no, that's not who you are. But that's what you got on a mark for (laughs) math. But you start to fill your mind and fill yourself with, this is who I am. I showed up 15 minutes early to the recording today. That's who I am. And what's amazing <laughs> is ever since I've been on your case, you've been getting earlier and I know. earlier. I know. This is amazing. See, and guys, it's working. He's what I've through done is me. working. <laughs> right? Right. But what, okay, well, what's your point? Like, what are you trying to say there? My point is this, is that 
performance accomplishment mm-hmm. is how we start to build our identity and say, this is who I am. And we fill ourselves with more and more and more and more accomplishments. But if we have a failure and the window breaks because the door was slammed and we didn't make it, we got cut. We mm-hmm. didn't make the team. Right. We got told, sorry, you're the fifth guy and we only take four to the Olympics. Mm-hmm. You're not going. I got to wait another four years. Who are you then? Hmm. Who is Cole when things don't go the right way? Who is Jim Hunter when things don't go when the right way? When you fail. Way? When you fail, what do you do, right? When the door slams. What's and, happen? and so what I want to teach you about confidence is how to fix the window. When it breaks. I want you to understand that you mm. can fix the window and you can develop in such a way that you don't get an eviction notice that says, you're out. No more bench pressing. You failed. You're done. <laughs> right? Right. I was trying to figure this out for the first four years of my life. Wait. As a ski zero racer. Zero to four. Oh. Oh, oh no, no. As a ski okay. racer. Okay. How old were okay? you? So 12, 13, 14, 12, 15. 13, 14, 15. So it was the spring of the year that I was 15, and, and there were no more races in Alberta, and, and I went... To my coaches with the Ski Meisters Club, I said, where can I go and get some more races? Where can I improve my points? I want to improve my points. I want to improve my ranking in Canada so that I can get in the top 10 in Canada. Right. And and you're ranked by those points. Hmm. And so I said, I, I, I got to do this. And my coach says, we can go to the spring series in the States. They have a spring series. Right. If they'll let you in. And I said, well, why couldn't we get in? And he says, you'd have to ask them. So... With the help of the coaches, we inquired as to whether I could go to the Spring Series in the States. Now, so you understand and have a context of the Spring Series and how this used to work, and and it still works this way today, is they have a series of races where the national team members are done the World Cup, they're done the Olympics, they're done the World Championship, if it's an Olympic or World Championship year, and they go across the country Mm -hmm. and they compete in the East Coast and the West Coast Mm -hmm. against American racers to see who's the next up-and-coming star. It's kind of like... What? Was it, you said in the States? And you, in the States. Okay. We, we did it in Canada too. Okay. But, but sometimes we're done earlier than they are just because of right. the weather and the conditions. Got it. Um, sometimes we're done later than they are. Every year is different. And so you were part of this sort and, of spring series? Well, thing. I wanted to go. Okay. With like the top people of Canada. I wanted to go. And, and my oh, parents said, how are you going to get there? And <laughs> I said, I'll hitchhike. I'm going to ride my bike. No, through the Rocky Mountains I again. Oh, no, and okay. I hitchhiked <laughs> to Seattle, Washington. From where? From Calgary. What? By what myself. Was this? Don't worry about it. How old it. were you? 13? I was 15. Oh, that doesn't make it better, sir. 15, you hitchhiked from Calgary to Seattle. Okay. You don't even want to know all the things I did, okay? <laughs> Let's just ignore that part. Okay, okay we'll keep okay. going. So I get there, right. and I get to the first race in Alpental. Is Alpental is a ski resort west, uh, east of Seattle. East it was Seattle. where the spring series started. Okay. And it starts in the Pacific Northwest. And so I went there, and i looking for a place to stay. And I went to the day lodge. Mm-hmm. Hitchhiked up to the day lodge, went in the day lodge, put my equipment down in the basement, found a place where I could just put it away because I needed to know I didn't have a place to stay. I didn't have any hotel reservations. I didn't have enough money for hotels. Right. I'm going to beg somebody to let me stay or I'm going to sleep if I can under the stairs in the day lodge because I've done that before. I used to do it this way. Okay. All right. Because I want to be a ski racer. It's the fire to, in your flame. You have to understand that I believe I'm going to be a ski racer. You'll do I'm anything. I'm going to be the best of the best of the best. So you're going to sleep wherever you need to sleep. So wherever I need to sleep, I'll roll out my ski bag, crawl inside, and cover myself with a ski bag. Right. I go upstairs. Mm-hmm. First thing I see is U.S. team, local Pacific Northwest racers, and all the racers from the West Coast, from California North, and over to Colorado, all of those best racers there to mm-hmm. race against the U.S. ski team to see where they stand and what their ranking would be. Right. And the first thing I notice is as I walk around the tables, I see that most of the people that are there, especially the girls, mm-hmm. they don't finish the food on their trays. So I offered to clean their trays. Oh. And I put the trays away, but the food they left, I ate. <laughs> because that way I don't have to pay for food. Okay, yeah, you're right. And I don't care if it's a half-eaten hamburger. It doesn't bother me. I'm not hung up on those kinds of things. Wow, okay. And and so I had food, and I knew how I was going to feed myself right. for the next week. Mm-hmm. Then I went, okay, 
I've got to find a way and a place to stay. And so I sat down and I just started listening to conversations. And I heard a couple of people talking and they're saying, well, I'm staying at Claudia's place. Oh, yeah. And does she have any more room? Yeah, she's got another room. But I don't know how we're going to get there because I don't have a car. I don't mm. have a drive. And one of the ladies says, well, I brought my car. I drove here and I've got seats in the back and I can drive you guys. Right. Because I'm staying, if you got me right, I'm staying just two doors down. Right. So you're hearing this conversation. Yes. They're talking about Claudia's place, whoever Claudia and is. the girl, yeah, I, whoever Claudia is. Yeah. And it turned out she was one of the racers. Oh, got it. From the Pacific Northwest and her parents owned a okay. place so on the mountain. So you're eating a half-eaten hamburger and you're hearing this conversation. And, and so... The girl said, but I don't like driving it because it's a stick shift on the snow mm. and it makes me nervous. So you're going to have to get used to my nervousness driving on the snow. And I'm a farm boy. Right. And I drive <laughs> everything. <laughs> and I jump up and I go over and I say, I hear you have trouble driving on the snow. Yeah. I said, do you want me to drive? Mm. Where are you from? <laughs> I said, Canada. Saskatchewan. <laughs> I'm a farm boy from Canada and I'm down here racing well, in the crazy. spring series. And she Seattle. Goes, she goes, what have you driven? And I said, I drive all the trucks on the farm. And she goes, oh, my family owns a horse ranch in Kentucky. Oh. And that's where I grew up. And what kind of a truck do you have? And I told her and we had, we, we bonded right away. She understood <laughs> right. truck language and farm language. And we, and she said, girls, we have our driver. <laughs> She never asked me how old I was. Right. She didn't ask me if I had a driver's license. <laughs> um, or how you got hate to the admit country. this, but I didn't have a driver's license. <laughs> and I was only 15. And in the States by yourself. And I'm in the That's States crazy. by myself. But she said, meet me out at the hill, at the parking lot at four o'clock, just so I can see if you can drive. Right. I said, okay, I'll meet you. Mm hmm I said, where are you guys training? And they said, on the hill, they named the run. And I said, okay. And I went up there and I side slipped the course because I wanted to smooth out the ruts so mm -hmm. that the girls would have a good run. Mm. And then I saw the national team training. And so I went over and I smoothed out their course. Right. And one of the coaches said, I don't recognize you. Where are you from? I said, from Canada. I came down for the spring series. I said, do you need a, do you need a flunky? What's a flunky? And he said, what's a flunky? Just what you said. <laughs> what? I said, flunky. a flunky is a guy who chops wood, serves meals, oh. washes dishes, like I did at Coconut Glacier. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'll be your flunky. I'll carry the gates for you. I'll side slip the ruts for you. As long as you let me make a run or two. Right. He said, let's go to work. Nice. That's so cool. now I've got courses to run. Mm -hmm. I've got... A ride for the spring series. Food to eat, sort of. I've got food to eat, sort of. <laughs> and the only thing left I need to have is a place to run the gates and race. Right. Well, I sidestepped the course, made it smooth, went up, made a run, went back up, sidestepped the course, went back up, made another run. And in the end, tore down the course for the man. The coach said, thank you very much. Yep. I said, what time do you want me here tomorrow morning? And he told me, and I said, I'll be here. I'll help you set before everybody gets up here. And he said, appreciate it. Right. And for the rest of the spring series, I had all of those things taken care of. Mm. My confidence was high. I get in the first race. I did okay, but I kind of finished where I was and I was sad. I went, <sighs> looked out the window of my eyes and I went, I can do better than mm. this. Why don't I have confidence? Why? I When I train, I go like this. But when I race, I try not to lose. Mm. And there's the difference. Mm. A confident person aims to win. How does the a confident person says, how do I win? He doesn't even ask how to win. He just aims to win. Right. The unconfident person says... Try not to lose. Mm. That's the way you see through your eyes. Now do you understand the window in the door? Because doubt's right behind it going, I don't have to do anything because your confidence is already shaky. Right. Because that's what we see. Hmm. Well, long story short, I get to a race in Mission Ridge. Three races later. Where's Mission Ridge? It's a little further East. Got it. In, in Washington. Okay. East of Seattle. Sure. And I'm up on the hill and I'm setting the course and I see this gruff, rough 
old man. Hmm. And I know who it is. He's the executive director of the U.S. ski team. And he's there to see his team. He's there to see these young racers mm. and start to think about who do we want on the U.S. ski team next year. Right. And he sees me up there running the course and then side slipping, running the course, side slipping. So he goes, I see him go over to the coach and he asks, and I know he's asking about me and I'm going, maybe I'm out of here. Right. And I get up to the start for the day of the giant slalom race and he comes up beside me and he goes, Hunter. Huh? And <laughs> just like that, <laughs> he, he, he grunts every time he says something. Right. And he says, Hunter, huh? when are you going to race the way you train? I went, I do. I do. Mr. Scheffler. I do. Right. He says, you know, my name. I said, Oh yeah, I know who you are. I said, you are brilliant. You are the architect of the U.S. ski team. That's why you guys are so good. Like, I do not want to get sent home. Right. <laughs> and he says, I don't care about that. I want to know, when are you going to race the way you train? And I said, well, I do. And he goes, stop lying to me. Stop lying to yourself. You're just lying to yourself. What's wrong with you? Have you got no confidence? Hmm. What he didn't know was, yeah, I don't. I worry about it in a race. I don't want to lose. I don't want to fall. I don't want to waste the opportunity. Hmm. I want to get another result. And I'd rather go down by half a point or one point rather than make a quantum leap of maybe five or ten points. Right. And really do what I'm good at and what I know I can do and I did in training. Hmm. <sighs> I know I'm lying to him. He knows I'm lying. Yeah. He says... It's about time you beat my boys and taught them a lesson because they're just going through the motions and I'd like to see you kick their you-know-what <laughs> and show them how to race right. and let a Canadian come down here and beat us Americans. Right. I said, you really think so? Hmm. Yeah. I want to see you race the way you train. He says, if you don't do it in the next race, I'm just going to walk right out in front of you on the course and kick you off the course <laughs> whoa harsh i'm in you know i i've got a couple of minutes before i'm gonna race mm -hmm. and he disappears and i get in the start and i look out and i see him about 20 gates down and he's standing on a knoll what's a knoll well, that mountain changes terrain oh goes from being like this to steeper and he's standing right on the knoll. okay he looks at me and he goes Points at you. Points his pole at me. <laughs> I know what he means. Mm. Cole, for the first time in my ski career, after four years of racing, I'm never winning anything. Right. I've never been on a podium, never having a result that mattered. And I was getting right close to that 169 races. Mm. I'm standing there going, why not? You know, he said to me when I argued with him about I was giving my best, he says, you're from Canada. You don't even have a coach here. Your coaches don't care. Hmm. You don't have a teammate here. Your teammates don't care. So what are you afraid of? Hmm. What are you scared about? What, why would you not attempt it? You've got nothing to lose. Hmm. I put my head down and I just went, let's just do it. Yeah. Let's just do it. You got nothing to lose. I got nothing to lose. I am going to go by him so fast <laughs> that he won't even be able to keep his eyes on me. I'll just go right by him. And, I, and I'm, I'm talking this way and I'm, I'm right. talking myself into it and I'm going, and the guy says, 10 seconds. I'm You're going, getting ready. You're getting five. ready. You're getting I ready. I put my poles, five, four, three, two. Boom, I explode out of the start and I attack just like I trained. Mm -hmm. And I'm going down the hill. I'm going wham, 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 wham. And I'm going. Wow, this is easy. This is so easy. I mean, why didn't I do this before? And you know, I'm just cutting runs like crazy. And I get mm -hmm. to the finish line. He pulls up beside me a few minutes later. I'm waiting to see what everybody else did. Right. This is your and time he's and waiting for the top 30 guys because all of his U.S. ski team guys and the best kids in the United States are there. And they're all going to be down after the top 30. Hmm. And he comes up beside me and he goes, how'd you do? I said, I think I'm in first place. And he goes, told you. 
<laughs> wow. He says, you finally kicked my boys. Mm. You know what? Yeah. Second round, I did the same thing. Mm-hmm. I won the race. For the rest of the spring series, I won every giant slalom. And the slaloms, I finished in the top three in all of those races. I lowered my points to where I was the lowest ranked Canadian alpine skier in giant slalom in the world. What, was, what does that mean? Lowest ranked? Well, it takes too long to explain the whole thing. <laughs> the points, but, but... But you get points for how far you finish behind the winner in her okay. ski race. And if you win, you get zero oh, points. Oh, guys, this is reverse. And then they yeah, take yeah, yeah, yeah. the points of each guy in it, and they f- do a calculation, and the calculation gives you what they call a penalty. Mm-hmm. And then the winner gets that penalty, and then everybody else gets that penalty plus the, the points right. they so get. So basically, lower the be- lower number, the better number. So, so you had the lowest the number. So the ranked. best John Slalom skier in the world that year would have had zero points. Right. Okay. I all of a sudden had 11 and a half points. Wow. And I went, I'm the best giant slalom skier in Canada. <laughs> and I'm 15. Yeah. Going on 16. I can do this. Hmm. Confidence. Con. Take the word con, Cole. We con ourselves into everything we believe. Hmm. We get conned into everything we believe, everything we say, everything we see and think, and what we're filled with, we've conned ourselves into believing that. And remember I said the word believe, belief, believed, they all contain that little word lie right in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. And we believe the lies we tell ourselves. And I say, you might say, well, why are you being so negative? Why are you talking about lies? The reason why is because we talk ourselves into wanting to say, I'm the best giant slalom in Canada. Hmm. Whoa, hold it a second. Really? <laughs> and and we even think we just told ourselves a lie, even right. though it's even true. Even though it's true. Yeah. And, and, and we talk ourselves in and out of through that window, and we crack the window ourselves sometimes just by what we see hmm. because we believe the lies we tell ourselves. Right. I keep telling you, you want to go and bench press 225. (laughs) Tell yourself I'm going today to do the next goal. And then the next day I'm going to do the next goal. But what's funny is when you get there and you say that and you grab that bar and it's got 170 on it and you go, I'm doing this today and you're going to do it because I told you to. The energy you put into yourself, the belief that you just placed in yourself, cancels the lies you've been telling yourself that I'm never going to be able to bend for 225. I don't sound like that. Well, no, you don't, but (laughs) that's the way I sound. Right. But the point is, Mm. our writer asked us, how? When I lack confidence, how do I get it back? You see, if we base it on performance accomplishments and we don't have any performances, I had no medals. I had no trophies. That's right. the Series. At 15, I had nothing. That trophy is back there for winning that race. It's got an apple on it somewhere. If you look back there. There's the, one of your many medals and trophies. It's one of them. There's one there that has an apple on it, and it was the Apple Blossom Cup, which is the race I won. Wow. When you're 15? The first race, yeah. Wow. And I beat the whole U.S. ski team, which confirmed that I not only was the best giant slalom skier in Canada, but maybe I was the best giant slalom skier in North America. Right. And I'm still not on the national team. I'm not on the <laughs> Alberta team. Right. I was told by the Alberta team coach, you're never going to make it as long as I'm coach. Hmm. You see, we can always find a reason why not to do something. We can always find people that will tell us you can't do it. Right. What authority do you give them in your life? What was the difference? The Alberta team coach saw me as somebody that was limited. Hmm. What did Willie Scheffler see? The 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 ski coach, the, the U- U.S. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. ski team executive director. Yeah, grunty guy. He, the grunty guy. <laughs> he came up to me and he said, "I believe in you." Hmm. He said that. See, yeah. the first thing you're going to learn about confidence is. By whose authority do you believe what you say to yourself? Hmm. Who gives you the confidence 
The original meaning of the word confidence is con, is to believe in, mm -hmm. because we con ourselves. We believe in what we tell ourselves. Right. We con ourselves. And so in the Latin, they said, we believe in what was made. You're a human being. You and I were created. We are here mm -hmm. because we were created. And we took our first breath. And there's a plan for us. There's a guideline for us. There's, hmm. there's a direction for us. Right. And do we believe in what was made? Or do we believe in ourselves and the lies? Exactly. Hmm. Because we have the choice. We have the choice to say, I believe you. Right. Or I have the choice to say, I reject you. I, I, don't, I don't want that. Hmm. But the point is, I believe in the authority of somebody that tells me I could do something. Hmm. Now, my coaches in the Ski Meisters believed in me and told me it, but I had never had the opportunity to prove it. Right. And not all of them said that, too. Not all of them were like, not all you got this, did. right? Right. Yeah. And, and so... If you want confidence, you have to ask yourself, who is telling you? Hmm. Is it just you? Are you just telling yourself and you've always doubted yourself and you've always wondered, will I be good enough? Can I do it? Do I have the confidence to do it? Right. Do I have just this or that? And I want you to understand, Cole, and I want our listeners to understand so that you don't go down the road of most of the parents and most of the kids I talk to when they ask me, how do I get more confidence? How do I get more motivation? Hmm. I, I want you to understand something. From zero to 10, I was identified as being one of the smartest kids in Canada. Mm -hmm. I was brilliant. But then I smashed my head. And you, we've yeah, talked about this accident, accident before. Mm -hmm. And I end up in a coma. And when I come out of the coma, I take 15 more months to recover. And so 18 months of being in a hospital, 18 months of not going to school, 18 months at 10 to 11 and a half years of age, I am totally somebody that now has been told by everybody that came and visited me, every doctor, every nurse, every person that ever came to see me said, it's so sad, you'll never be able to, what? Mm -hmm. And whatever it was I could do before. And then it was confirmed a week later because when I went back to school, the school board said, we don't have room for your kind here mm. because you're mentally handicapped. Right. That was the words they used then. When I started ski racing, every ski racer and every parent and every coach said, oh, you're the kid from Saskatchewan. You'll never be a ski racer. Hmm. I, I was as low as you could ever be hmm. in confidence. Right. Because everyone was just dogging on you. Well, where am I going to start? Right. Where where am I going to go when anything that I had to believe in was completely wiped out? What, what am I going to do? You will never, I heard again and again, you will never from friends, from authorities, even, even from my dad. Right. And I'm not dumping on my dad. My dad is like every dad, like every mom. He wants to protect this child mm -hmm. who's had this horrible accident I mean, he's not a sports psychologist. He's not a psychologist. He's not a psychiatrist. He doesn't know how to help a child who's now got a poor self-image, has poor self-worth, doesn't see any future for him, doesn't want him to get hurt even more, mm -hmm. doesn't want him to set dreams way up here and he's way down here. Mm -hmm. But instead, my dad tried to set realistic goals and steps. Right. And, and he started to say, Oh, don't do that yet. No, no, not yet. Oh, no, no. Start here. We'll, we'll work slowly. Let's start here. Yeah. It was the best thing he could do because mm -hmm. all of a sudden when he put me on the tractor at 11 and a half and <laughs> said, I want you to cultivate this field. He says, all I want you to do is follow the marker, go straight up and down the field till you're done. And I'm going to ride with you, and you're going to drive it. I'm going to sit on the wheel well. When we get to the end of the field, I'm going to show you how to make a big turn and come back and not pinch onto the cultivator and damage something. Mm -hmm. I'm going to show you how to stop, how to put it in gear. I mean, he taught me everything that I needed to learn. Right. And I'm out there all day going back and forth in this field. Mm -hmm. And I'm going back and forth, back and forth, and I'm going... This isn't what I want to do. <laughs> I'm 11 and a half. This is not it. I'm, I'm 11 and a half. 
I, I'd rather do something else. Mm-hmm. But my dad had to start where I was mm-hmm. to help me build my self-confidence. And so when I look out the window, I would say, I can do something. Mm-hmm. I can do a little thing. I can make little gains. What was the results of that? Is I won that spring series. Mm -hmm. And it set me up for a chance to try out for the national team, which set me up for a chance to go to Europe that next year Mm. and race on World Cup and go to my first race and start number 141 and finish about 101. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know, I mean, I was so far behind Carl Schrantz, the winner of the race from Austria. But by then I'd learned I started my first race, I was 169th. And I picked them off one by one. I'm going to pick these guys off one by one. I'm going to start all over again. Why? Because I have confidence in what I can accomplish. Hmm. Performance accomplishments. I can do this little bit today. Right. And the more I do this little bit, the more confidence I start to build in myself because now I believe in what was made. I made this through doing everything that it was possible for me to do in the moment, I made this. The problem is that we want it instantly because we live in an instant world. If you want to know something, you can pick up your phone and go, what happened in the Ukraine last night? And you can hear it. You can see it. Mm -hmm. What happened in the Middle East? I can see it. I can hear it. Yeah, Everything's instant. If I want to warm up a meal, I can put it in the microwave and it's... Or you click a button on your phone and McDonald's shows up in five minutes. Exactly. Yeah. And, and we've forgotten that all of that makes that possible has already been taught and learned over years and years and years and years. And people investing their lives to create the internet, to oh, create the, yeah. the technology, Softwares and all that. to create mm-hmm. all the methods by which we enjoy instant. Hmm. And we forget that if we have a dream, if you have a dream, if you believe in the fact that you want to bench press 225... <laughs> The sooner you set a date for accomplishing it, the sooner you get busy and serious about saying, I'm going to do it. Hmm. Because you won't let a day go by without going to the gym, without going there and and doing what you have to do. For me, my dad did one little thing at a time. And my mother was just as involved because, again, she's not a psychologist, psychiatrist. She doesn't. One little thing at a time for you? Or what do you mean one little thing at a time? My dad says drive the tractor. Oh today. yeah, first teaching you one thing. Then at he a says, time. I yeah. want you to I want you to seed the field. Right. I want you to draw drive the swather. I want you to drive the combine. Mm-hmm. I mean, what else is he gonna do? Mm-hmm. Eleven and a half, yep. Learning things again. And my mother came along and said, because she saw me reading an encyclopedia one day and she said, Do you understand it? And I nodded yes. Mm. And so what did she do? I'll show you. Um, I don't know if Cole can get a picture of this or has a picture of it, but probably behind me there. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah. Those are all journals. The entire bookcase is just journals. And that's only a small smidgen of them. The rest <laughs> of them are in boxes. That's why he sees all these boxes here. And I give you a hard time and, and they, they're still there every week yes, after week. Because <laughs> I go back through them and look up stuff. In your old journals, hey? And my mother gave me a binder. It was that thick. I, I can actually show you the binder. Sure. Are paid in this are pages right of that first year of working on the farm when you were eleven yeah wow that's crazy because she had three hundred and sixty five pages one for every day this binder looks like it's falling apart and, oh yeah I mean it's <laughs> it's been through a lot it's a lot of years and, and it it says she wrote at the top of every page and then gestetnered them and if you don't know what a gestetner is look it up <laughs> you'll find it funny compared to photocopy right. and that kind of stuff but. Atop it said record. Hmm. And then it said about three quarters of the way down, review. And then about 10% from the bottom it said redirect. Hmm. And without going to school, I recorded my life. I asked questions. I said, how do I get more confidence? Hmm. How do I, you know what? I learned confidence by doing something. Right. I cultivated 80 acres today. <laughs> I wonder if I can do 90. I wonder if I can do 100. Hmm. Little things. And and by doing little things and 
recording it and reviewing it and saying, this is what I accomplished, and then down here, redirect, how could I do better? I learned confidence. Hmm. It's like, it's just something Slowly. Build. Yeah. Interesting. And, and so, if you are going to prepare to do something and you don't believe you can do it and you lack confidence and your confidence window is broken, the way to fix that window is to say, what little thing can I do today that moves me towards where I want to go so that I con myself hmm. into believing in what was made? Right. And we've only dealt with one aspect of it, and I'm so glad that you're here today listening to this podcast on In the Jungle with Jungle Jim Hunter. Mm -hmm. And in the extended material, I'll take it a little bit further, but what I want you to understand is, is that it's that simple. Hmm. It's not complicated. You, you don't need something else. You don't need something outside of yourself. You don't need a friend to confirm you. But you do need an authority figure that believes in you that will say, <clears throat> when are you going to race? You need a Mr. Grunty. Trying? You need a Mr. Grunty. <laughs> you need an old grandfather or an old <laughs> uncle that will come up to you and go, I see a lot more in you and I think you could be something. Right. right. I believe in you. Hmm. And you go, wow, I'm going to do that. Hmm. I hope you will. I hope you've enjoyed listening. Write me. Tell me what you want to know. Tell me what questions you want to answer. Mm -hmm. How do you want to learn? What do you want to learn? Yes. And join the Patreon. We have so much more to give you and so much more to share. So let's do that. And if you enjoy it, become a Patreon. Join us. Sign up. Mm -hmm. Become a Patreon. Look for further education. Look for the extended material. If you become a Patreon, we'll send it to you and you can write me a question. And I'll answer it. I'll answer it personally. Mm -hmm. and I'll send you the information you want to know and I'll help you. Mm -hmm. and invite your friends invite your family to listen invite somebody that you know has talent but doubts their ability and doesn't have the confidence mm. get them to listen to this get them to to pay attention to this and say i want to know more go find a cole in your own life who wants to do something and just can't seem to do it absolutely <laughs> we're here to help all well, right thank you for listening to in the jungle with jungle jim hunter